fall 2022, a revolution has begun in Iran, and women are fighting on the front line. It's about women being able to dress as they wish, think as they wish, do as they wish. This is about woman, life, freedom. The protests have been met with violence. This is a barbaric regime telling me, the woman, that you are not allowed to show your hair. A struggle uniting activists, artists and intellectuals. Iranian women are fighting back like never before. It's the first feminist revolution in the world. The protests were sparked by the death of a young woman, Gina Masa Amani. She was arrested in Tehran by the notorious morality police. Her crime, not being dressed as the law requires. After her arrest, she collapsed in the police station. She was taken to a hospital with severe head injuries and died shortly afterwards. Gina's family is certain that her death was the result of police brutality. An unprecedented wave of protests gripped the nation. The murder of Masa Amini unleashed this rage and uh, it gave them a way to explode. Woman, life, freedom became the rallying cry of the protests. The women had had enough of the hijab. It's very, very important. The headscarf is a symbol of the Islamic government. Schools became the site of protests. Young people rose up. And in this deeply patriarchal society, another form of revolution has been taking place. Women are receiving strong solidarity from men. The entire Iranian society has felt the consequences of suppressing freedoms, which are corruption, poverty and discrimination. Iranian pop star Mehdi Yarahi is one of the many who have paid dearly for supporting the women. He dedicated this song to them in August 2023. It encourages women to take off their headscarves. The regime declared his actions illegal and he was arrested. The state responded to the protests with extreme violence. More than 20,000 people have been arrested so far. Death sentences have been carried out. More than 2,000 schoolgirls were poisoned. Many suspect the regime, but there have been no conclusive investigations. 16-year-old Nika Shakarami was abducted at a demo and imprisoned. Later, her body was found with the marks of torture. The regime declared it a suicide. Since the beginning of the revolt, people all over the world have stood in solidarity with Iranian women. They're also demanding an end to the Iranian dictatorship. For freedom. International female celebrities and other women cut part of their hair and posted the images online. Hair is political, says Iranian Masi Alinejad. For years, she's been campaigning in exile for feminist issues. I ask women whether they want to share their pictures with me, stealthy moment of freedom with me. I was bombarded by pictures from women inside Iran being unveiled. So I created my stealthy freedom page on Facebook, on Instagram, and it's all about freedom. It's all about dignity. It's all about choice. For nearly 90 years, Iranian women's hair has been the subject of political and religious battles. Headscarf or no headscarf, it's always been up to men to make this decision for women without their say. 
Reza Shah, former Shah of Iran, wanted to use educational reforms and repression to modernize the Islamic country. In 1936, he banned women from wearing headscarves. For him, it was a symbol that went against his idea of progress. However, in 1941, Reza Shah was forced to abdicate. His son assumed power and continued to push ahead with modernization. Under Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, women were given the chance to break away from traditional roles, and in 1963, they were given the right to vote. Under the previous regime, we had several freedoms, and women were allowed to join in with new aspects of society. The new Shah once again allowed women to wear the headscarf in public. But he went on to establish a brutal dictatorship. Progressive and left-wing forces opposed him, as did the Islamists. Revolution followed, and the Shah was deposed. The Islamists took power. Ayatollah Khomeini declared the hijab compulsory for women. Going out wearing makeup and without a hijab is like going out naked. And it is not in keeping with a woman's position. By doing so, they turn themselves into dolls. Leftists who, like the Islamists, fought against the Shah were in disbelief. I worked in a newspaper in Shiraz, and uh, we heard in radio that we have to have a force to have a job from tomorrow. The girls there, we had a very short skirt, and one of my friends just took her, her uh, skirt and covered her hair and we could see <laughs> everything else. So we, we just laughed and laughed that we didn't believe that. But the mullahs were serious. Many women were outraged. They took to the streets in protest. Leftists saw this as the betrayal of their revolution. Like Nahid Pershon Sarvastani, who went on to make documentaries, the leftists uh, were uh, many, many more than the Islamists, but they were more organized than we were, the Islamists. That's why they won. When we did the revolution against the Shah, we just wanted justice. We, ju we wanted uh, democracy. But what we uh, get was thousand times worse than the Shah's regime. A regime of terror followed. Over the coming years, many who were involved in politics were driven into exile. Like the family of journalist and author Gilda Sahebi. She writes about Iran from Germany and about the meaning of the compulsory hijab. This form of control is very important. This repression is one of the pillars of the regime because it puts half of the population under its control and creates a platform to build their ideology upon. The Islamic Republic of Iran relies on maintaining power over women. Their rights are systematically removed. And a woman is only worth half as much as a man, literally. A woman's voice only counts for half in court. If a woman dies in an accident, the family receives half the compensation, as though women weren't full human beings. The most important right that we lost was our identity, our identity as human beings. Women are prohibited from doing so many things, like singing or dancing, or wearing what they want and everything is sexualized. Why is the hijab not enforced for men? This is a way of looking at the female body as a place of sin. It means that a woman's body, a woman's head, and a woman's being are humiliated. And along with this humiliation, men are also humiliated. Sexuality lies at the core of the matter, because a free woman has complete freedom to decide on her sexuality. She decides on her own whether to have sex and how, and whether she wants children or not. And this extremist ideology aims to control all that. This form of control over women is essential to the Islamist regime. 
Women are far more powerful than men, and I think that creates fear. They have to suppress women if they want to build a state run by violence, a terrorist state. Because if women are free and want to exercise their freedoms, these guys can't keep doing what they want. So they lock women up. They carry out mass arrests. In prison, women experience firsthand just how cruel the government's display of power can get. Nahid Pershon Sarvestani brought together former prisoners to make a documentary film. What happened to them after they were arrested? One of the women featured in the film wrote a book about her nine years in prison and the torture she experienced there. Nine years of prison and seeing how people were just executed on a whim. Such brutal torture and brutal re-education processes. People need to know what happened. Someone stuffed a dirty rag into my mouth and someone started whipping my feet. Involuntarily, I withdrew my leg and screamed a scream that was like an animal. Then I don't remember anything. Starving myself must have worked. Executions, torture and rape became political tools that are still used today. Anyone imprisoned for political reasons first goes into solitary confinement to cut them off from the outside world. They don't have the right to a lawyer and they're tortured until they testify against themselves. The protests that began in 2022 were not the first. For decades, people have been taking to the streets, hoping for democracy, in vain. Huge protests broke out in 2009. It was our turn to try our luck. And for a few weeks, we had the feeling of being as close to our target as never before. They were protesting Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's ultra-conservative administration, accusing them of electoral fraud. The regime's response was brutal. People were shot and tortured or disappeared without a trace. The so-called Green Movement failed. The protesters were focusing on one particular issue. In 2009, it was against vote rigging. And the call of the protesters at the time was, what happened to my vote? In 2009, protests took place basically within the system. Demonstrators said there had been electoral fraud and their votes weren't counted, but they weren't demanding for the system to be taken down. The next waves of protests didn't call the system itself into question either. In 2019, for instance, it was the increase in gas prices. And once again, the government violently cracked down on the demonstrations. But with the protests that started in 2022, there's more at stake. Demonstrators are campaigning to topple the whole regime. They want four decades' worth of crimes to be atoned for. This time is not the economy, is not unemployment, um, is not water, is women. This revolutionary movement is more radical than all the others before, and it's still going strong. 
with women at the helm. This is the first feminist revolution in the world. Our campaign is woman, life, freedom. That's only possible in a democratic, secular system. Since the mass protests began in 2022, women have kept up the fight. They're resisting in new ways and standing up for their beliefs, breaking the rules, showing their hair, making music, and dancing. Women are losing their fear, even though they face increasingly draconian punishments. I just don't see people going back to the way they were, because there's so much hate for the regime, especially after how much violence they've exercised in the past months, in the past year. I absolutely cannot imagine people going back. Everything seems to demonstrate that these women have no intention of giving up. They're continuing their resistance in every form. In my opinion, this regime will be toppled, but it may take some time. No matter how long it takes, Iranian women are showing determination. I am proud of you all, and I know that you will succeed. What do you think? Will the regime fall? Will the women's revolution be successful? What form should international solidarity take? We'd love to hear your thoughts.